Hey y'all, my name is Priscilla and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very exciting video for you. As you can tell from the title, this is going to be a collaboration between Latinxathon and Latinx booktubers. So the Latinxathon co-hosts myself, Andrea, Yvette, and Jocelyn all reached out to Latinx booktubers to recommend their favorite Latinx books. This video was inspired by Sajid over at Books on My Social Life who had a recent video with Muslim reviewers recommending Muslim books. So there's lots of recommendations here. We asked people to send in clips. Yvette and I were at BookNetFest so we asked people to film with us if they could and that's what you're in store for today. So without further ado, let's get on to some recommendations. <laughs> Hey, my name is Nori and I am from Reading with Nori. Now a little bit about me. I was uh, born in San Juan, Puerto Rico and came to uh, the United States around the age when I was seven. So kind of had to start over, make new friends, learn a new language, which is why sometimes um, you kind of hear the slur in my words, but I don't mind. I'm proud of who I am. And um, they reached out to me to uh, recommend my favorite Latinx book. And let me just say, 2019 is filled with all kinds of Latinx books. We range from like romance, contemporary, fantasy, sci-fi. We are just, I'm loving 2019. But I have to go back to the one that sparked it all, and that is The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. Now, this book just touched me, and it changed my life because I never, in the 24 years of me being on this earth, I never felt represented. Like, I never felt like I was connected to a character on that level. So this talks about Xiomara and, um, she is, I believe, um, still a teenager, older teenager, around 15 or 16. And this book just shows the struggles between home life with her mom, which is not the best relationship, her struggling with her religious upbringing, and um, crushing on a boy, and discovering poetry and discovering her words. This book is just the experiences that she has and uh, what Elizabeth wrote down on paper was just like me looking at a mirror when I was a teenage girl like this was so impactful and I highly recommend that you pick this up I know that this, this is a really high book but it is for good reason Hello everyone, it's Paola and the Latinxathon girls were kind enough to reach out to me and ask me to recommend you a book so that you can read it during Latinx Heritage Month, more specifically Latinxathon. But I'm going to cheat a little bit and recommend you a trilogy. This is the Happy Endings trilogy by Zoe Castile. Zoe Castile is also known as Zoraida Cordova. She has written Labyrinth Lost. She recently came out with a Star Wars book. But this is a trilogy and it's a contemporary romance trilogy. The first book is called Stripped. The second one is called Hired. And the third one just came out and it's called Flashed. And they all have to do with male strippers falling in love. I hope you can get your hands on it so that you can check it out and let me know if you end up loving it as much as I did. Hi everybody, my name is Cynthia. I'm from the Guild Free Reader and my reading recommendation for Latinxathon is Women Writing Resistance, Essays on Latin America and the Caribbean, edited by Jennifer Browdy. This book is a collection of 16 essays written by Latinx women and it is written both mostly in prose but it also contains a little bit of poetry. I feel that generally speaking when we think of Latin America the majority of people's minds go to Mexico which you know, it's fair because Mexico is part of Latin America. However, Latin America is a huge region with many different countries. And so something that I really loved about this book is that it's actually the minority of writers who are from Mexico or who have Mexican heritage. I feel that despite the space constraint of 16 essays, this book manages to be a fairly comprehensive view into the experience of being a Latinx woman. The topics range from anywhere between the disadvantages and injustices that Latinx women face in academia in the U.S. to the retelling of uh, experiences 
of having lived during the Argentinian dictatorship from the point of view of both a mother who lost her daughter to the repressive authorities, as well as to the memories of the daughter who who went missing during that time. And there are also a couple of essays that talk about the paradox or the paradoxical way in which indigenous communities are seen and treated in more specifically Brazil and Guatemala. And actually the essay talking about indigenous rights in Guatemala was written by Rigoberta Manchu, who is like the one of the leaders, I think, of uh, indigenous rights. She won a Nobel Peace Prize and I believe she was also the person who started the a uh, little division or department within the UN that fights specifically for indigenous rights. I really hope you consider this book. Despite the heaviness of the topics, I found it to be a fairly quick read as well as a book that left me feeling very empowered and in want to to have some action within an impact within my community. I think it could also be especially helpful if you're wanting to include some nonfiction into your reading this year. And that is all for me for today. I wish you the best of luck with your reading goals for Latinxathon. Hi everyone, my name is Cynthia and my channel is Book Whimsy. Today I'd like to recommend a Latinx book and that is Certain Dark Things by Celia Moreno Garcia, who is a Mexican-born author who now lives in Canada. Certain Dark Things follows Domingo, who is a street kid in Mexico City. One day on the Mexican subway, he meets Adol, the descendant of Aztec vampires who is on the run from a rival Mexican vampire group. Um, a large part of the story does take place in Mexico City, which is supposed to be a vampire-free zone. Part of this world uh, involves a lot of different kinds of vampire groups, and it's one of the best aspects of certain dark things in my point of view. Each vampire group has different powers and different abilities and that impacts the way they interact with one another and how they've evolved um, over the centuries. In Mexico, vampires run the drug cartel business and so this ends up being a very dark, very gritty, very violent book. Um, it's very reminiscent of Mexican movies like Amores Perros, Nicotina, a kind of kind of noir genre in Mexican and Spanish language um, movies. It is a multiple perspective story, really about belonging, about family, about feeling lost and trying to find your way again in the world. It's also a story very rooted in Mexico City so that if you have ever been to Mexico City, uh, this story, even though it's filled with vampires, will still fit, feel very familiar. I should warn you though about some of the content in here. As I've already said, it is very violent. There's also descriptions of drug use and the drug cartel business. But if you're looking for a gritty, violent vampire story, this is it. Hello guys, my name is Roxanne and I am a booktuber over in the channel The Novel Sanctuary. And if you know anything about me or have seen any of my videos where I talk about uh, my favorite Latinx books you have heard me mention when I was Puerto Rican by Esmeralda Santiago. I have two different editions here. And this is the first in a memoir trilogy series that she wrote about uh, herself and her growing up and uh, coming of age and finding love. And this first one focuses on her childhood. Um, growing up in Puerto Rico, um, being very poor, going through difficulties with her family, her mother, her father, trust issues. Um, when the United States begins to take over the education system in Puerto Rico, uh, a lot of, of social commentary and familial expectations are dis discussed in this book. And it was the first time that a lot of the things that my mom had always told me she experienced as a young girl were were shown to me in in a book and I felt seen by seeing the experiences that my mom I know my mom went through uh in a in a book it, it is beautifully written it really transports you to the island and she also takes you with her when they move 
to New York and that stark change in culture and in language and everything that she has to do to fit in and to make sure that her family succeeds and um, finding a place in this new world and it means everything to me and I highly, highly recommend it. Hola a todos, soy Mariana del canal Mariana Quesada. Todos mis videos son en español, pero siempre agrego subtítulos en inglés. Soy de México y el libro del que hoy les quiero hablar es The World of Winnipeg and Me de Mariana Zapata. En este libro seguimos a Vanessa, asistente de Aiden, quien es un jugador profesional de fútbol americano. Y su historia comienza con ella renunciando a este puesto para dedicarse a lo que ama y a lo que estudió hacer, que es diseño gráfico. Cuando, poco tiempo después, Aiden la busca para proponerle un trato que involucra una relación falsa que va a convenirles a los dos por distintas razones. Los libros de Mariana Zapata se distinguen por ser romances lentos, se toman su tiempo para establecer una relación y crear la química entre los personajes y hacer más creíble y más angustioso todo el evento. Y las razones por las que amo este libro, además del hecho de que es una relación falsa que va evolucionando a algo más, son en primer lugar que durante todo el libro va presentando posibilidades de que utilice recursos que normalmente no me gusta ver en libros, pero siempre logra evitarlos, así que por esa razón no hubo nada que no me gustara en el libro. Otra de las razones es que aunque este libro sea muy largo, es de 670 páginas, no se siente ya que nunca se desvía realmente del tema principal. Y aunque sí vemos a nuestro personaje interactuando con otras personas y con otras partes de su vida, al final todo lo que ocurre en el libro es por una razón y por eso hace que la lectura sea súper rápida. También amo el hecho de que Vanessa no es la típica protagonista de una novela romántica, donde normalmente son bastante ingenuas y no se dan cuenta de qué es lo que está pasando a su alrededor. Y Vanessa no es así, tiene los ojos abiertos y sabe perfectamente qué es lo que está ocurriendo, lo que hizo que nunca me frustrara con este personaje, lo cual me lleva a la última razón por la que amo este libro, que es Vanessa como tal. Es uno de los mejores personajes femeninos que he leído, es dedicada, pasional, honesta, consigo misma y con el resto de las personas, y disfruté muchísimo leerla. Por otro lado, Eren es un poco más difícil de agradar, pero poco a poco te vas enamorando de él. Y por todo eso, esta es mi recomendación. Gracias, Jocelyn, por invitarme a hacer este video. Bye. Hi, my name is Blair, and my channel is The Blair Book Project, and I'm going to be talking about my favorite book by a Latinx author, and one of my favorite books of all time, and that is The Air You Breathe by Frances de Pontes Peebles. Graza and Dorish are two girls born into vastly different worlds. Dorish is the bastard child of a servant, while Graza is the spoiled daughter of a wealthy sugar baron. They form a friendship based on mischief and eventually they find their shared love of music. This book follows them when they are young children into their time when they're adults. In their teen years, they run away from home to Rio de Janeiro in the famous neighborhood of Lapa, and they start busking and singing um, on corners to try and get noticed so that they can have a singing career. Soon the girls catch the attention of a notorious mobster, Madame Lucifer, and he is actually a flamboyant character who helps them create a career for themselves and actually introduces them to the third member of their trio of friends, Vinicius. And Vinicius is a guitar player who is deeply emotional and has a true love of samba music. And together the three of them and their band start making albums that sell all over Brazil. Graza is a fiery spirit and outgoing and is used to getting everything her way. And Doris is more introverted and calm and feels very passionately about music. Where one lacks, the other is quick to pick up the slack and they help each other out. And their tumultuous relationship is actually quite realistic where they really fight for each other and are really supportive, but there's still jealousy. There's anger, there's sadness, there's joy. Their relationship is well-rounded. It's not a stereotypical two sides of a coin character development and something that I really enjoyed reading. One thing that I really enjoyed about this book was that it tackled some really tough subjects, such as classism and colorism and racism. Dorish is discriminated against her whole life because she has darker color skin than Graza, and she is seen as less than. Another thing that Dorish has to battle her whole life is that she's bisexual, and if anybody finds out, she's referred to as a Bigfoot, which is a derogatory term in that time for a woman who loves another woman. If you want a story about two women in a deep friendship and 
a historical lesson on the treatment of other cultures, I suggest that you read this book. Hi, I'm David, and today I'm going to be recommending a book in honor of Latinx Heritage Month. And today I'm going to recommend Certain Dark Things by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. This book is basically about vampires in Mexico City, and it's in an alternate timeline, obviously different from our own, where vampires are prevalent all throughout the world, and many of them live in Mexico. Many of them even immigrated from Europe to come to Mexico. But Mexico City is the one bastion of vampire-free neighborhoods, I guess. It's the one vampire-free city, basically, in all of Mexico, largely due to the gangs. The human gangs have kept out the vampires. And you have the story of Adol, one vampire from the northern part of Mexico who has a very bloody past and she's fleeing from something and she's trying to go somewhere else. She's trying to, she's trying to get to Guatemala and she, you know, Mexico city is basically a pit stop. There she runs into Rodrigo, who is a young man who collects bottles and he's just, <laughs> he really has no purpose. He's just living day to day. And I, I, I don't know if I want to say Adol gives him a purpose, but, she kind of does. Um, in this book, Sylvia Moreno-Garcia weaves together so many points of view. I feel like you have the protagonists, and then you have the good guys and the bad guys. And those three kind of all weave in together. Because you have another character, Anna, who is working as a police officer, and she uh, doesn't quite get the respect she feels she deserves. And I've seen Anna is all about you know seeking justice, even though it's hard to do in her position, even though she's a police officer, but still there's so many things, there's so many other obstacles in front of her um, that her job's hard, hard to do. And then you have Nick, who's another kind of vampire, and he's coming down from the north, and he's chasing after her, he's chasing after Adol, and, and you know, it all comes together. And, and I don't want to give anything else besides the premise away, because it's a really good book, and you should absolutely check it out. It's totally up my alley. I like to read dark fantasy, or grimdark, or urban fantasy and um, this is definitely bloody Adol is definitely a protagonist who gets her hands dirty and I enjoy books like that personally I would like to see a lot more of this I feel like there's not enough Latinx authors who delve into uh, urban fantasy or grimdark uh, just more of that if if you have any recommendations I mean feel free to comment down below and I'd love to check some more out but for me I love this book Alexa from Library of Alexa and I'm here to recommend one of the greats, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Now I know, I know, he's very scary. I agree. I haven't read all his stuff and I don't know if I will, but damn it's beautiful. If you don't know, Marquez is one of the greats. He wrote A Hundred Years of Solitude as well as Love in the Time of Cholera, two, you know, wildly, wildly popular novels um, in the magical realism genre. But if you're scared to jump into him like I was, I would recommend one of his novellas. Uh, this one here is Chronicle of a Death Foretold. This follows 24 hours following a wedding in a very small community in which everyone, all the players in the town, know that this murder is going to take place and they do nothing about it. Now I'm not going to say much because it is a very short novella, but if you're looking for absolutely gorgeous writing, there's no better place to start. Happy Readathon! Hi, my name is Derby from Derby Lane Reading, and the book that I would recommend by a Latinx author is the Japanese Lover by Isabel Allende. And the reason I would recommend that is because everyone loves The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo right now, and that book has a very similar vibe. And I really think people who love that book will like this book as well. So definitely give it a try. Hi, my name's Adriana, and my channel is Perpetual Pages. And today, the book I'm recommending is Cantoras by Carolina de Robertes. It is an amazing own voices, great Latinx historical fiction story set in Uruguay. And I think it's about these amazing, powerful queer Latinx women. And it's about them learning where they belong, finding a place for themselves. But it's also about them learning to love themselves and love each other. And I also think it's about restoring dignity and agency and power to these queer Latina women uh, who were denied that during their time period. But I also think it's just an amazing celebration of queer resistance and it's really great and I definitely recommend it. My name is Astra Pizarro. My channel name is Book Lovers Book Reviews. For any Latin exiton, I wanted to recommend Donde Rosa Santos. I read it recently. I really like the family aspect of the book and I like learning about the culture and the family connection, the connection within the town. 
it made me realize that I really miss home and it made me think about home as well because I don't have that connection here when I moved here to the United States and I really, really miss that about being with my family and our neighbors and that family thing, the family connection we have with everybody. And I really enjoyed it and I would really recommend it to any of you. Hi guys, it's Taylor and I'm from the channel Page Screen Taylor. Um, today I'm going to be recommending Daughter of Fortune by Isabel Allende. Um, if you don't know what it's about, it's a historical fiction novel about a young Chilean girl who is raised by a white British American spinster. She falls in love with a Chilean boy and he, when the California gold rush strikes, he goes off to seek his fortune and she becomes pregnant with his child and when he doesn't return, she decides to go off after him. She teams up with a Chinese physician and the two of them travel across land and sea to, to try and track him down. So I really like this book. One, it's a historical fiction, which I really enjoy. And it also fe um, features a Latinx woman taking agency. She doesn't sit around and wait and try and figure out when things happen. She's, the minute she finds out her man is missing, she immediately goes off after him. She is not going to stop until she finds him. It also features an interracial romance, which I really enjoy. And I really like the dynamic between the physician and between our main character. I think it is a, an incredibly interesting book and incredibly underrated as far as, first of all, as far as historical fiction books go, but also as far as Latinx lit goes. Um, I believe there, there's a sequel to it as well, and I highly recommend you check both of those out. Hi, I'm Jit Marak from Jit Marak, um, and today I'm going to give you one Latinx recommendation. Mine is In the Time of the Butterflies by Julia Alvarez. I read this for a class. Um, it's about the Mirabal sisters who are real people, so it's a historical fiction novel um, who are fighting against uh, di a dictatorship in Dom the Dominican Republic. Um, and it's just a book about a, a group of sisters who are fighting against this evil or bad um, structure government. Um, it's a book about badass, badass women fighting for what they believe in and it's a book that I really enjoyed and I think everyone should read. And yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Ellie from The Ellie Effect and to my recommendation for Latinx Heritage Month is The Book of Unknown Americans by Cristina Enriquez. She is an own voices author as she is a Latina. And this has two, it has a main plot and a subplot. So basically we're following a family and how they are coming from Mexico into America to pursue a better medical treatment for their daughter who has had an accident. And while they're here, the daughter ends up having a relationship with another, another guy that lives in this particular apartment complex. And then the subplot is we find a lot of we follow the lives of everybody that lives in this apartment complex, which are a lot of Latinx characters. They're very complicated. They all have their, they all have their own story to tell, which is so great to see, especially in this climate that we're in now. And it's just really nice to see more Latin Americans shown and represented in a book that we have Puerto Ricans, we have Cubans, we have Mexicans and all of their different traditions and backgrounds and it's just really empowering to see them in a book all commingling together and knowing their stories. So I highly recommend this book. I gave this a five out of five stars. So go read it, go check it out and I hope that you guys enjoy it. Hi, I'm Jessie from Bowties and Books, and the Latinx-centric book that I would recommend is Esperanza Rising from Pam Munoz Ryan. And I read this book when I think I was like, I think the first time I read it, I was probably like eight years old. And I got it at a book fair, and it was the first time I had ever even seen or encountered Latinx literature. Um, and that alone was so special to me, even though I didn't have the language to articulate why at the time. Um, and then I started actually reading the book and not only was the writing so beautiful and measured and like illustrative 
and that was like really special for me because so many of the books that I was reading, um, even though I was pretty young, weren't challenging me and weren't engaging me in the way that I wanted my books to read. To read, so I was always reading books that were for older people than I should have been reading it, and so it was really nice to have something that was written um, by a Latinx individual um, that centered like our experiences at a level that I could like engage with and, and really, really uh, feel connected to. But as far as the story itself, I think what sticks out to me to this day and the reason that I would really recommend it is because it is at the heart of it, a story about a mother and a daughter's resilience. And that familial bond is something that is so precious and treasured and also such a backbone to being Mexicana and that was something that like really, really stuck out to me because I never saw um, Mexican-American or even like Mexican relationships between a mother and daughter uplifted in the media. Um, and considering that like I'm Mexican and that's what I had at home, um, it meant something to me that I can't even express to see that in literature at the time and the age that I needed to have it. Um, yeah, so I highly recommend Esperanza Rising and I think that you all should read it. Hi, it's Rocky or Raquel from Blonde with a Book, and I'm going to be talking about, to absolutely no one's surprise, Don't Date Rosa Santos by Nina Moreno. This book, oh my gosh, this follows a teenage girl, Rosa Santos, who is the granddaughter of a Cuban immigrant and just follows her journey with identity and feeling connected to her heritage while also struggling with issues in her family and grief and wanting to pursue love and kind of create her own legacy while still respecting her heritage and her ancestors and everyone who came before her that are giving her the opportunities she now has. And I felt so represented and seen by so much of that. I am a granddaughter of a Cuban immigrant myself, and I had read Own Voices Cuban American representation prior to this, but I don't think I've ever felt as seen by literature as I felt by this book. It understood those feelings of being the descendant of immigrants so perfectly, while also being so Americanized and feeling like you owe so much to a specific country or a specific heritage, but also feeling like it wasn't necessarily yours to connect to. I think it's something that a lot of people can relate to just in general with their identity and their legacy and familial relations and disconnection, but it is so specific to the experiences of being Cuban American as well, which is something that I was not emotionally prepared for, and this book blew me away with the way it manages to tackle such serious themes of grief and loss and love and expectation and legacy and heritage so beautifully and perfectly and succinctly in a way that is so specific and real to Rosa's experience, but also feels so relatable and like it can extend to so many different heritages and cultures and backgrounds. I cannot express how much I love this book. It has raised the bar to an unreal level of what I expect now for Latinx representation, for representation to make me feel seen. It showed me how starved I was for representation that I didn't even know I necessarily needed and makes me feel inspired to do the same thing for other people and makes me want to help other people find books that make them feel this scene. Um, I just cannot recommend it enough. Uh, I am so excited to read more of Nina Moreno's work in the future. I just love this book. It owns my entire heart and soul. And um, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I'm just rambling about how much I love it, but I cannot recommend it enough. And um, I just, I absolutely love this. <laughs> okay, I'm back now. Hello again. And I'm just here to close out this video and say thank you so much to all of the contributors, all of the people that sent in clips and that filmed with Yvette and I at BookNet Fest. And thank you for also recommending some amazing Latinx books. I hope that by watching this video, you are inspired to read something Latinx during Latinx Heritage Month. If you are Latinx and you have a recommendation for a book, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I would love for this video to act as a resource for all things Latinx during Latinx Heritage Month.
And this will be my final plug for the Latinexathon, which takes place on September 15th. It will probably have already started by the time this video goes up. But if you want to take part in the Latinx Lit Takeover and read the group book, The Grief Keeper, please mark your calendars for October 3rd because that is when we will be having a live Q&A with the author over on Twitter. But that's all I have for this video today. So thank you so much for watching. Go subscribe and support Latinx creators. And I hope to catch you in the next video. Bye.